Hi, and welcome to a World of Words book recommendations. I'm Vanessa, and today I'll be recommending books by Meg Cabot. So one of my all-time favorite authors that I've noticed isn't mentioned very often on BookTube is Meg Cabot. I'm not really sure why that is, maybe because a lot of her best books were released quite a few years ago, but that doesn't mean they're not worth reading. I reread them all the time, and so I'm here to walk you through all of her best series and standalones. Because I own so many of May Cabot's books, this video might end up being more than one part, so I'm going to just start with the series. So my all-time favorite series by Meg Cabot is, is the Mediator series. There are six books in this series, starting with Shadowland, Ninth Key, Reunion, Darkest Hour, Haunted, and Twilight. Not to be confused with Twilight about vampires, this one's not about vampires. So this series is a lot of fun. It's basically Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but with ghosts, because teenager Susanna Simon is a mediator, so she can see and talk to and touch ghosts. They're uh, physically real to her, even though nobody else can, because they're just, um, they're invisible to other people. They go right through other people. If the ghosts get really strong, they can kind of move objects around poltergeists and things like that, but they can't actually touch other people, but they can uh, touch her, which causes a lot of problems because sometimes she has to beat up ghosts. <laughs> um, her job is basically to try and help the ghost pass over to the other side, but some ghosts are just nasty and they try to make this very difficult for her. So the first book, she moves to California with her mother um, because her mom just got married. So now she has a new stepfather. Her dad died when she was a little girl um, and three new stepbrothers. But when she moves into her room, it turns out there's somebody already occupying it. His name is Jesse. He's a ghost and he's been there for like over a hundred years. Uh, because that's the place where he died. Um, and he happens to be a very attractive male ghost, and so they, obviously from the start there's all this romantic tension, and Jesse's a really awesome character. He ends up being very protective of her and is her love interest throughout the series. He, he's the angel to her Buffy. <laughs> um, so while it does start out having a lot of similarities to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but after the first book, it really it takes off in another direction. Um, so these are a lot of fun. They're really quick to read. I have lost count of the number of times I've read this series. So I just wanted to point out that the first three of these are kind of standalone books. You could read any one of them without having read the others pretty much. I mean, the last three begin to have their own continuous plotline with a, a villain character is introduced and kind of stays as the bad guy throughout the rest of the series and they all are very connected to something about Jesse's past. I actually do prefer the last three to the first three. Of course I love the first three. Uh, I love all of these books very much but uh, the, the last three are definitely my favorite because I just I love continuous plot lines and the way that this is continued and then the way they end the way she ends this is really really amazing. <laughs> the kind of like this book will make you cry, but in a good way. In a good way. The ending is just amazing. It's just an amazing series. Uh, it's up there with Harry Potter for me. They're completely completely different books but I do enjoy them as much as I enjoy Harry Potter and I reread them every couple years. It's nice because these editions have the numbers actually all conveniently on the side so you can always figure out which one it is. My second favorite series by Meg Cabot, which I adore, is it was first published as the 1-800 Where Are You series 
that's how I first read it, so it will always be that in my mind. But then they changed it, the name to The Vanished. There are actually four books. These ones um, are book one and two, When Lightning Strikes, and Codename Cassandra. And then this is book three and four, Safe House and Sanctuary. Now this series follows Jessica Mastriani, and <laughs> one day, it's kind of like, Kind of like a Marvel thing, um, in a weird way. One day she gets struck by lightning, and then the next day, um, you know, they used to have the missing kid on the back of the milk carton. I don't know if they do that anymore. Um, definitely not where I live, they don't do that anymore. The day after Jess got struck by lightning, she could, she somehow in a dream knew the location of this missing kid, and so everything kind of gets fueled by that. She ends up having basically a superpower where she can find missing people. Um, and this obviously as can cause a lot of problems. Jess kind of has some anger management issues which makes her a really really funny character. She gets in a lot of fights <laughs> and she kind of she has a really funny kind of tough girl type personality. Um, Suze I forgot to mention Suze from this series. While she does beat up ghosts a lot, she's not really a tough girl. She is really into fashion and hair and makeup and stuff like that. She's a tough girl. She's really, really, she's like one of my all-time favorite female protagonists. Um, but she's tough, but she doesn't... You, 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 but like Jess is a tough girl. She's not really that into like hair and makeup stuff like that. Um, she's really into motorcycles. Uh, and of course, Jess has a love interest too. This guy who's kind of older and kind of mysterious. He was he's on probation for something that he doesn't tell her for a long time. <laughs> His dark past is, um, but that's kind of a through line too. And he's he's a really awesome character. One thing I really like about the love interest in these two main Cabot series is that neither one of them's like perfect boyfriend guy that you get in a lot of young adult novels or romance novels where they're just completely look perfect but they don't really have their own personality. They're just there to be the love interest. These guys really do have their own unique personalities and they make the series really fun and they each of these girls has their own like, group of friends or unique best friend that really makes them a lot of fun and you really like to see what's going to happen next on their adventures. So these obviously are the editions that are published with multiple books in one. Um, so it's now called the Vanished series but if you find the 1-800 Where Are You series which is what I originally read it's the exact same book, so definitely get those. These are a lot of fun, too. I mean, they can get into some slightly, slightly dark subject matter, but they are for teenagers, so there's no excessive swearing or anything like that. Not excessive. There might be occasional swearing, but not, not that bad. I read them when I was 15, 15-ish, mid-teens, so they're fine. And the next series, the next series is the Airhead series. It is a trilogy. Airhead, Being Nikki, and Runaway. This one is also really fun. Um, it's about a girl who is really into video games and gaming and things like that. She's not really that girly at all, but she... <laughs> It sounds really awful. She gets crushed in an accident and basically dies, but then somehow her brain is transplanted into that of a supermodel. So the person she was, Emerson Watts, um, is legally dead. So while she is alive, she has to live as Nikki Reed, the supermodel, and you can see how this might cause problems, especially since she kind of wants to go and live her own life. Anyway, so it starts off with her just trying to live new life as a supermodel and all the hilarity and crazy things that come with that. And then it goes and gets into the conspiracy behind this company who Nikki works for, Nikki's the model, um, and 
the brain transplant and things that happen with that. And there are a lot of plot twists actually in this series and it's really good and really fun and really funny. So I would definitely recommend reading this. <laughs> this trilogy as well. It's, it's really, really fun. And then we have Princess Diaries. I only have the third one. <laughs> I have read the entire series. All nine books. Every single one of the little half books or quarter books because they came out with these little tiny quarter books that were in between the other books but I have read them all and they're all very fun and very enjoyable. I really like Mia Thermopolis though these ones I don't love quite as much as the Mediator and the 1-800 Where Are You series just because Mia can to repeat herself a little bit um, which you know, they're in diary format, as it is Princess Diaries. Um, so while I do like her a lot, I don't like her quite as much as Susanna Simon and Jess Mastriani. Uh, but these are really good, really fun books. Definitely worth reading. You read them really fast. Like this one I could probably read in an hour or two. <laughs> like, look at how is. Um, so I've read all of them, and I am going to read the brand new one, A Royal Wedding. If you didn't know, Princess Diaries is now going to be an adult series. Well, I don't know how many there are going to be, but she just came out with a new one and I am going to read that very, very soon uh, where Mia is getting married. <laughs> if you have watched the movie, nothing like the movie. Like, her dad's not dead. Her grandma is mean. In the movie, her grandma's really sweet, but her grandma's not nice at all. She's actually pretty terrifying. It kind of makes Mia's life miserable, and she's not nice at all. And there are all these characters in the books that were completely cut out of the movies, and Mia is actually a bit younger in the books. I believe, I believe she's 16 in the movie, but I think it starts out with her about 14 in the books, and then it goes to her being 16 and 17. They're really entertaining though. All, all her books are entertaining. Now we are on to The All-American Girl. This book is uh, really entertaining. There is also a sequel called Ready or Not. Now, I don't like Ready or Not quite as much as the first book, so I kind of consider this one a standalone. Um, this one's really good, really funny. It's about a girl named Samantha Madison teenager obviously and she ends up saving the president's life and meeting the president's son and she saved the president from an assassination attempt the whole world thinks she's a hero um, and now she's been appointed teen ambassador to the UN and she's jealous of her big sister who is really pretty and really popular and her sis she's in love with her big sister's boyfriend. Her big her sister's like a year or two older than her sister's boyfriend. And her younger sister is a certified genius. And she just um, she's an artist. But yeah, it's basically about the fact that she's kind of a local celebrity since she saved the president and craziness happens as these things do. Um, and one last one is the Abandoned series, or Abandoned Trilogy, I believe. Um, I do have the first one. I have misplaced it. <laughs> I don't know where it was. I actually really, I was looking for it before I filmed, started filming this. I, I can't find it. Uh, which really isn't that tragic because it's not much like Meg Cabot's usual style at all. It's not, it's very, very serious. It's kind of a lot like, um, you know, you know the Twilight kind of craze when everything was about moody girls like Fallen and Hush Hush where it was all these girls and they're all really moody, kind of just sit around and angst about things. <laughs> And it's not like these other books where they're going through problems and they're angsting about things and it's really funny because they're just kind of upset about their lives but they, they make it really entertaining and funny. But this girl, I think her name is Pierce? I don't even remember her name. She just, 
she's not very funny. I didn't really like her as a narrator. It really wasn't anything like the other Meg Cabot books. With like, I when I read a Meg Cabot book, I'm looking for something fun and lighthearted to read. This really wasn't fun or lighthearted in my opinion. I know a lot of people do like it. It wasn't my favorite of her books. I still love her as an author, but that just wasn't my favorite. And I haven't read the other two, so I can't really say anything about them. Um, for it's not much like these books I mentioned. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. So thank you very much for watching the Reading Recommendations Meg Cabot Series Edition. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you pick up some of these books. If you haven't read any of these books and you do, let me know what you thought. And let me know which one you think sounds the most interesting. If you have any questions or anything about these books, just let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'm Vanessa and have a great day. See you next video. Bye!